There we go. Oh, let's think and go. Got the female, I think. Now, how do I get down here to get this fish? That's the question. Oh. Over the last decade, I've caught fish in every corner of North America, from California to Mexico, Florida to New York, and all the way up to Canada, documenting it all on video for you guys. Yes, I got it! But as a video creator and instructor, I have generally left out one of the most important and the largest demographics in the world of fishing, and that is the bank beater, the pond prowler, the shore master. Yeah! In this series, I'm making it my goal to fish more bodies of water than I ever have before, but this time from the bank. My name is Tyler, and this is 100 Ponds. Well, what's going on, folks? And welcome back to 100 Ponds, where I'm trying to fish 100 of these things. If y'all missed any of the previous 100 Ponds videos, I will leave those linked in the video description below for you guys to check out. But I'm excited because in today's episode, we're going to be fishing, hopefully, a few ponds that are relatively unique to this area and definitely different than you've probably seen in the 100 Ponds series so far. And so if you're excited for that, stick around. Now, before we get started, I have to say this video is brought to you by Chinook Sunflower Seeds. I am a big time snacker. I always have to be snacking on something as I drive or as I fish. And I'm a sunflower seed guy, I enjoy them. But one thing I don't enjoy about a lot of sunflower seed brands is that they'll arrive all smushed in the package. They will leave my mouth super dry and sore after eating a few handfuls and the flavor are not that good. All of that changes with this company right here. I have never had seeds that taste this good. They've got some sort of like proprietary way of putting the seasoning on the shells so it doesn't just coat it, it like gets inside. They're so good. They've got flavors like smokehouse barbecue, Parmesan pepper, but my favorite, get this, cinnamon toast. So if you're a sunflower seed person, make sure you give Chinook seeds a try and you can save, I believe it's 15% or 20% by using code Tyler at checkout. That would help me out a ton. And like I said, they're the best dang seeds I've ever had. So with that said, I say we hop into the next pond in the series and that's going to be pond number 36. So walking up to pond number 35, it's a very, very interesting pond. I don't think I've ever seen one like this in a subdivision neighborhood. And what's so cool about this, as you saw from the drone shot there, is it's like two little quarries that I believe have really deep water. I've not made a cast yet, but I think there's really deep water in both the bottom pond and the top pond. We're gonna call this one pond, even though it's technically two separated by a waterfall. And uh, it definitely presents some different scenarios. We have pretty clear water, I give it four to five foot visibility on this bottom pond here. The bank is very slippery with this kind of like shale rock, whatever this is. We've got a very stringy aquatic vegetation that goes out until the drop. And then it looks like we have a rock ledge for that drop where there's probably some fish sitting down there in deeper water. So we're gonna start with probably not a vibrating jig. I've got a drop shot and a jig rigged up because I knew that it would be deeper here. So we'll probably start with the jig see what we can do. We're just gonna try flipping it out there just about 10 feet. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's still going. It's still going, there we go. So probably 10 to 12 feet right there, which for a short pitch off the bank at a pond is pretty dang deep. And I'm definitely feeling grass all the way up the ledge there. So as soon as I hit the ledge, I'm probably done for. Well, it seems that I have found uh, a unicorn for this time of the year and that's a fish on a bed. He's sitting right here in front of this drop off. So I'm gonna pitch my drop shot down to him, shake it in his face, ah, and he has gone. But he made a little circle. Come on, buddy, eat it. There's now a second bed fish. What the heck, there's two of them now. There we go. Oh, let's think and go. Got the female, I think. Yeah, I definitely got the bigger one. Now, how do I get down here to get this fish? That's the question. Oh. That's the question. Bring it in here, beautiful. Oh, uh, let's stink and go. A little bit windy out here, but first fish of the day at pond number 35. Drop shot, top of the mouth, popped right out. That is beautiful right there. Probably two and a half, two and three quarter pounds. Love it. Let's get you back on your bed though, missus. See ya. Well, that right there is always a great way to find easy success in this 100 pond series. As you all know, catching one fish is technically a success in these ponds. And so if I can find one on a bed, easy success. Let's get the jig back in our hands and catch one we can't see. I'm making my way downtown, walking fast. 
Oof. Let's head to the other side. Not really feeling this deep area here. It's getting a wee bit windy. Uh-oh. We got snagged. I've got a rock in my shoe. Well, when things don't go your way, you gotta adjust. You can't just keep throwing the same stuff. So let's get our backpack out. Ta-da! Boom, baby, thunder, cricket, acquired. Let's catch a fish. Pretty sure I'm not supposed to be in this area. Oh well. I'm gonna be honest, this pond really confuses me. Well, I think all that we can really do now is just focus on the jig. I think that spells the end of pond number 35 for two reasons. One, for my mental health. I'm sick of this place. And two, because we got other fish to catch, other ponds to see. I say we pick our stuff up and we'll see y'all at pond 36. Well, Pond 36 is here and it is windy. So windy, in fact, that I had to put on my on-body microphone. So hopefully you won't hear the wind that much. Water clarity is crystal clear and I believe that's because of a chemical. Kind of bums me out because when I checked out this pond a few months ago uh, in the winter, it was not blue. So I've got a sneaky suspicion a lot of fish in here died. Got him, there we go. Little guy, like literally, Itty bitty guy on the plopper. Hey, that shows me there's still fish in here. It's good to know. And that's technically a success, except I never consider a half pound fish success. No, no, no. I'm gonna hope for the best, but assume the worst for most of the fish in this population. So when it's this windy, what the heck do you throw, Tyler? Well, you throw things that are moving and you throw heavier stuff that you can actually feel and maintain contact with. But I mean, it's blowing a, a constant 20 with gusts of like 30, 35 right now. One problem though that you might have with windy days is, is your line makes a big bow if you make too high of a cast. So I'm almost always a roll cast kind of guy, but especially on windy days, roll cast and then I put my rod tip down into the water, just like that. That way the line cannot bow up. Keep my line as low as possible because if the wind takes that line this way, it will affect the movement of my lure and will make my hook set much harder because I'll have more line out. So let me show you again. Side cast, put your line down. That's the best way I found to make sure that you are maintaining full direct contact to your lure without getting that big bow in your line. And that works for bait casters and spinning reels. I use that for spinning stuff all the time, even in like barely any windy conditions. I wanna make sure I'm bringing my, my line down to the water because it can't move when it's in the water, but it can move when it's uh, in the air. Man, I just don't feel good about this pond. I'm being honest don't like the blue water. I don't like the wind. I like the fact that there's rocks in it, but I just don't feel good about it today. There's another one. There's another one. Just a rinky dink, skiing them on in on the plopper. Well, these two fish basically tell me everything I need to know about this pond. That it either had no fish to start with, or they all died, or they just put new little tiny ones in. I don't know what the official answer is, but I don't like it. Question of, do bass live in blue water? At least this blue water? Not really. Well, with that cast in, we're gonna collect our stuff and head to greener pastures, not bluer pastures, at pond number 37. So walking through the brush to get to pond number 37, and honestly, I'm pretty disappointed. And the reason is because this pond here I chose because on the map, it looked like it was the oldest, it looked like it was on some old farmland, but I get here, and as you can tell, it's scorched earth policy with this pond. I mean, they've bulldozed almost the entire uh, side here, planted new little you know, bushes, and I assume there's gonna be houses going around this pond right here. Now, was it this original size and shape? I'm not sure. I feel like the theme of this video is like, can you catch fish in bodies of water that are currently being messed up due to new residential neighborhoods? And so we're gonna give this one a try. Like I said, it looks like it's the oldest one in the area. I'm probably gonna do one loop with the uh, vibrating jig. I tied on a red one because I could tell this water clarity was not super clear. 
And I also had to hike through the woods a little bit to get to this pond, which makes me think it's not very pressured. So even though it's post-spawn, unpressured fish in this pond, if they exist, should bite a red old thunder cricket. So let's give it a shot. I just saw some minnows scare off the bank right there as I brought my vibrating jig in. So that means there are minnows, at least some kind of forage in this pond, but there's no vegetation. There's really no structure of any kind. It is just like flat, sandy, muddy bottom. So I'm not feeling too good, to be honest. Put this after, put that phrase out. Oh, oh gosh, hold up, hold up. I was trying to direct myself on what phrase to put later. Oh my goodness. Wow, chunky dunk. Get in here. Let's stink and go. Two, two and a half pounder. I was gonna put in a phrase after this catch, but I'll say it now. I wonder how many fish die off in, in, in farm ponds that get turned into residential ponds. What percentage of fish die based on chemicals, based on construction. All I know is that there are fish in here. That's what I'm talking about. Gee, right off that little drop off here. It goes from you know, the bank in one foot of water to let me uh, peel my line to three, probably three and a half to four feet of water. And that's where that fish bit. So in a situation like this, you got two options. The first is to make one loop around the body of water and then make a loop the opposite direction. Because since there's no structure, no grass lines to really target, you're kind of just making random casts down the bank and it's inevitable that you're gonna miss fish. You're going to cast over, you're gonna to cast to the left and right of where they are. And so you can make one quick loop one way and one quick loop the other way. But the alternative way is to make one very slow loop, making a bunch of casts into that strike zone area as you work your way around. But I think this strategy here is not a bad idea. There's one. Blood stinking go. Wow. Okay. So there are fish in here. How about that? How about that? A little chunky dunk right there. Beautiful. Man. That's an incredibly healthy fish. <laughs> Thank you, my dude. Oh, baby, I'm feeling good about this now. Two fish. Oh, dang it, I had another bite. I think a decent amount of fish survived the residentiality of this pond, eh? And I've talked about this in previous pond videos. If you know where the strike zone is, do not waste your time making casts that are not in the strike zone. So I know the bass are biting right about there. And so I'm gonna be casting as much as I can to where my bait is in that strike zone most of the time. So right here, I'm in the corner of this pond, I can make a cast down the strike zone. But if I'm working the pond this way, I make little casts like this as I go that really allow me to be efficient because you don't wanna be making big, long bomb casts into the middle if that's not where the fish are. You're wasting time. There he is. Aha! No wonder you are so small. He is just a one scoop. We are now getting to the windier side of the pond because the wind's blowing this way, of course. And so this should be the better side for moving baits. The ecosystem should be, you know, more riled up on this side. And so I assume that's the case, but I did only catch my fish in the corners so far. One in that corner, two in that corner. So that makes me think they're only in the corners and on certain types of structure, like when this clay bottom here is more bumpy. On these straightaways here, it seems to be pretty flat. I'm really gonna focus my efforts on those corners and the select banks that have a little bit of variance in that bottom contour. That's where the fish should be. Oh, there's one. Gosh. That's two bites in a row. There should be a fish right in this area, man. Look at the difference in clay contours. There's gotta be fish. There's one. Oh yes. Yes, sir. Biggest one of the day. Biggest one, bring it in here. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Yes, absolute chunker, three pounder. Look at that fish, how he ate the old thunder. The cricket of thunder, wow. Yeah, so this is how you can tell these were farm pond bass. Real, or at least Texas farm pond bass have real different types of build that are just so, so thick, beautiful fish. And that fish right there was kind of on a difference in contour, but I don't know if honestly, if there's any rhyme or reason today why the fish are where they are, you just gotta put your lure in front of their face. 
So what I'm gonna do to finish out the last few minutes of this video is I'm going to rig up probably a finesse jig or a Texas rig on this rod here and fish very slow down the area that I got like two or three bites on to start this video. So I'm gonna re-rig and we'll see you guys when we're fishing slow. A little itty bitty finesse jig and PB and J. Just gonna fish it real slow and hopefully end this video on one more fish. Well, you know what? That's supposed to work. You're supposed to be able to go back down a bank that you caught them on a reaction bait by throwing a slow moving bait and catch fish you missed. But I guess maybe they just want to eat something moving fast today. Still a fun time though, prove myself wrong. I totally thought I'd catch nothing in this pond. Well, everybody, that is going to be it for this episode of 100 Ponds. If you want to see the entire playlist, all my previous 100 Ponds episodes, I will leave that playlist up here in this corner for y'all to check out. And if you want to check out an awesome jig fishing video targeted at y'all that fish ponds primarily, I will put that up here in this corner. The longer you stay on my channel, the better it does in the algorithm. So thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And we'll see you next time right here on TRF.